So sure. this was the Raw after WrestleMania, which meant that uh, the first hour was commercial free. And like, I thought this segment with Cody and Rock that we're going to talk about, I thought it was quite great. And was, they did was, plant the gr- seeds. It, it was gr- it was great, but man, was it long. 40, I think, what was it, 43 minutes, this segment commercial free. I, I, I mean, thought I thought it might have been the longest talking segment like that I've seen in a long, long time. I think it might have been one of the longest talking segments in the history of the company. If you talk about like uninterrupted, no commercial breaks. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. even when they have no commercials, they usually don't go 43 minutes or whatever for a, a segment. But no. The show opened. We're gonna we're gonna start with Raw here because it's the Raw after WrestleMania. And there's a lot to talk about, and really the most newsworthy thing was the opening segment. Oh yeah. So it opened with Triple H coming out, and uh, if you guys were sick of this Paul Levesque era thing on Sunday night, get man, ready. Man, it ain't ending, and uh, that is going to get annoying real quick. Well, they may they may they may slow down now. I hope they slow down. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, he they, comes out. They, they, they. Um, I mean, the, there's a lot of th- reasons why they're doing it. I mean, obviously, um, the key one is is because of the negative publicity that Vince got. They want to make sure that uh, you know everyone knows it's not Vince, it's not Vince, and uh, they're going to hammer this thing down that you know it's Paul Levesque. So he comes out and the fans chant, "Thank you, Hunter," and he, and he says, "It's funny. I just want to thank you guys." 24 hours ago, you made something special. He agrees this was the greatest WrestleMania of all time. He said every metric, bi- every wise, standard. Bi- business-wise, it was. Yeah, you know, he said every metric, yeah, you, every you, you, standard. Yeah, you can't argue the business. Business-wise, it was. And, um, I mean, it's it's interesting because Cody and Roman Reigns uh, headlined the two biggest houses in the history of professional wrestling in the last two days. And um, that's uh, pretty. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. He said he had the privilege of standing in the ring, welcoming everybody to WrestleMania on Saturday, and here he was welcoming uh, welcoming them to Raw. And he said, "Welcome to a new time, a new era." And I would like to welcome the man who will lead us into the new era. So he calls out Cody. Cody gets a massive reaction, shakes hands, kisses the belt, celebrates with Hunter. Fans chant, "You deserve it." And Hunter says, you know, before I leave, I wanted to offer congratulations. You absolutely deserve this. Congratulations on bringing in one of the greatest title reigns of all time, headlining the greatest WrestleMania of all time, first night as champion, largest gate, history of Raw. But before I go, he said, there were two guys in the studio that you've known for a long time, and they said they made something special for you. And they asked me, can you show this to Cody? And he said, I watched it, and I told him, no, I'm going to show this to the entire world. So they had a music video so, for Cody. So, 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 so we're supposed to believe that this wasn't planned for Raw, and they just did this for shit. It was just for Cody. It was, it was just, just for Cody. Cody. Like, send him the file on his phone, you know. Mm. So uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was it was really nice of him to to do that for us. Let us yeah. let us watch it. Yeah. So, so Hunter notes is like the biggest Raw crowd we've ever had, and so we don't even That's have Tron true. here. That's not true. Yeah, it's not, it's not even close. I think to he said the biggest crowd. gate. I think he said it was. It was. The biggest it, gate. was it was the biggest gate. Pat McAfee said biggest crowd. It was not the biggest crowd. The biggest crowd for a Raw was at uh, a 1999 show at uh, Sky Dome, which is now Rogers Center, which was uh, 41,000. So this was. Uh, they said 20. I mean, I I haven't looked for what the real number is, but I mean, it's it's clo- it's going to be close to 20. I mean, they're they're not. Like like the WrestleMania numbers, you know, usually it's like ten to fifteen thousand more than than, um, and sometimes twenty thousand more than than um, you know what the real number is. But this year it was only like three thousand more. So it's a new it, it is a new era, and one of the new era things is is that um, they're not really exaggerating attendance uh, to the level that they used to. So they, uh, he notes that because there's like so many people in this building, we don't even have a Tron tonight. And so they literally sent, set up LED TV screens like around ringside, hoping that 20,000 people would be able to watch the video. And, uh, and they played it, and it was a fantastic video. It basically traced you know everything from Stardust to meeting his wife and winning the Rumble and the road and the victory at Mania. And they had a little inset in the corner, and Cody's just crying his eyes out watching this video. And the fans are cheering, you deserve it. Cody gets in the ring, puts a belt 
on the mat and kisses it. And uh, when he's finally done with all of this, it's time to do a promo. And so, so I, I, I think that Cody has turned into one of the greatest baby faces I've ever seen. Um, not, I mean, I don't think that he has the natural charisma, and, and, and he has natural charisma. Don't get me wrong, but the natural charisma of, you know, like a Ric Flair or Dusty Rhodes or or, or someone of that level. But he has an, an instinctive ability to um, get to to react in an emotional way that draws you in. It is really something to see. Like uh, he just like he makes you 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 know he makes you like him, and that role you know it's it's interesting because in in AEW it, it didn't work, but um, I mean it did for a while, and then then it didn't because of a promo he did and then just became the cool thing not to like him um but the um it's just his his ability to do a promo it is an effective promo but it's a different effective promo than most of your great baby face stars i mean he's he's I, i can't come up with someone who he is like but he's so effective at this i mean it's really something to watch him in action like i'm kind of in awe of it really of just how good he is because it's like you know john cena you know is nothing like this roman reigns when he was when they tried to make him a baby face was nothing like this hulk hogan steve austin none of them you know brock none of them are anything like him I mean, he's is as a unique character but he is an effective as hell character because uh you know this this whole uh you know era you know granted it started before him in a way um, I mean, as, as far as the real boom part, um, it started with Roman and Sami Zayn, but he jumped in and, but he, he went out there to those shows and I mean, you know, house shows, you know, they weren't even making money on house shows for years. It was like break even some quarters, you make a little bit of money, some quarters, you lose a little bit of money. It's basically a break even business. And he, you know, basically turned that whole thing around. Well, he does. The first part of his promo was just talking about how you guys may not like Roman Reigns, but, you know, 1,300 days as champion, probably the most important superstar of the generation. But he says, I was the man who defeated him. And he says, people always ask when you start wrestling, what is your why? And has a video of his daughter saying, Papa, finish the story. He says, that's my why. That now it's time to, uh, to get going, he says. I want to be a fighting champion. I used to stand in line, and now... The line is for me. And so suddenly the Rock's music hits. And you know who the, you know, you talk about Cody. I got to see something about The Rock. This guy is like. Well, he's the most charismatic guy that I've ever seen. In well, of time. course. But like yeah. his, his promos, they're like a great, like an Okada match or one of those guys where the match can go 45 minutes and it feels like it only went 20 I will this disagree guy, because this oh promo, man. This, this promo felt like it took forever. I well, mean, because it, he didn't did, say anything forever. Yeah, but I mean, man, did, it, whatever I mean, you think or the viewers think, like this guy can just stand there for two straight minutes. Okay, okay. Well, and these you. fans are eating it up as he just stands there. That's true. Okay. And if you, if, like, if we recap this promo, if I just read what I wrote, I'm going to be done in. 45 seconds they stretch this out over 15 minutes and the rock is so good at just playing this live crowd like a fiddle like well well the thing, he the thing, is a master well one of, of the thing one of the things they played his music like it was freaking Freebird. you know what i mean it was like i think one of the things on tonight's show was because the crowd was so alive um and big and easy is you know and 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 then and not there for wrestling matches also which is another thing but this crowd like they just did, they did it for for a lot of people they just played that music and played that music and played that music and when the rock came out i mean it was like how long is this song it like never ends and they did the same for cody it's like i heard i you know i never heard that whole cody song you know i mean i've heard the start of it but it's like man it's like they just dude i think they played it all the way through twice last night it was maybe more than that, actually. Yeah, they are really into uh, entrance music, which, look, I mean, a lot of people are going now for entrance music. 
It's 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 in many ways it's back like the '80s, where like you know, for the, the entrance music was such a giant part of the show, and then people just kind of burned out on entrance music and it just became a part of the show. Um, you know, I mean, there's that period where you know you'd go to a show and the people would go crazy for the entrance music, and then they'd go quiet for the match and just wait till the finish for the pop for the finish, and then cheer for the entrance music again. And we're um, I'm not saying we're getting back to that. But after a while, the entrance music is the entrance music. And now it's like back to people are here for the entrance music a lot. So the first half of his promo is just letting the fans chant Undertaker, Rocky sucks, shut the fuck up. He's just going back and forth with fans. This guy set a record for the biggest gathering of trailer park trash. He said that a thousand times, but like they 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 eat it up every time. They cheered. They cheered when he called them trailer park trash, even though they booed him a lot, you know, um, they did cheer when he called them trailer park trash. I mean, that was, um, I don't, you know, interesting dynamic, I guess. So he finally gets to the point, which is you completed your story. You faced the odds. You beat Roman. All of the things you had to overcome, I made you bleed. I ripped your clothes. I split your skin. You still did it all. You completed the story. I even made my own weight belt. Put your mother's name on it. And she was proud of you. Your father in heaven, proud of you. And as everyone may or may not know, your daddy was my hero. And the soul man, my dad, and your dad, they were good friends. He says, I'm not sure my dad was proud of the stuff I did to you, but you know what? I don't care. But you finished the story. I, I, I know his son was, his dad was proud of him. And you got a brand new belt. It's beautiful. And the fans start chanting that Brock's got a fake belt. And Rock says, hold on a second. He says, when I joined the Nation of Domination, Muhammad Ali gave me the name the People's Champion, he says. And his widow gave me this belt to the Hall of Fame, and it is very special to me. God, he's, and like, he says, he's like Hulk Hogan. He says, Cody, I just have one question for you tonight. I love belts. I love wrestling. I've held almost all of them. Did they ever ask I, him to did they ever, did, did, did Metallica ever ask him to sing? I, who rock? I I highly doubt it. Okay, I was just wondering. Well, he says I've never held that belt. Can I? Can I hold it? And the fans were like, "Don't let this guy hold the belt." And Cody says, well, "You want to hold it? Well, all right, you can hold this one, but uh, I want to hold that one." So they very, very, very slowly trade belts, and the fans are chanting, "This is awkward." And Rock puts a belt on his shoulder, and he says, just feels right. And the fans are booing like crazy. They're furious. And so they they trade belts back again. And Rock says, thank you very much for that. It means a lot. And he says, as you know and everyone else knows, the Rock's got to go away for a little while. But uh, trust the Rock. He doesn't want to leave either. He loves pro wrestling. made it cool again. Cody made it cool again. The fans start chanting the goodbye song, and he starts laughing. But he says, remember... The Rock is going to go away, and when he comes back, whether you're the champion or not, I'm coming back for you. And Cody says, I'm looking forward to it. And then Rock says, one more thing. I just want you to know that you beat Roman Reigns clean in the middle of the ring last night, one, two, three. But 24 hours earlier, I beat you clean in the middle of the ring. So your story with Roman Reigns is over. You did it, but your story with me has just begun. Wow, that's almost like a burial of Roman Reigns. I mean, it's not, it, you know what I mean? Well, I'm sure that's going to play into that story at some point when Roman finally comes back and he's all pissed off that Rock blew him off to yeah. continue this story with Cody. Yeah. So then Cody says, well, you know, I, uh, you're on the board, right? You're my boss, my literal boss. Well, I don't think you'll dispute this. I am the champion. I am the champion of these people. And uh, that means I'm your champion. And the fans chant Cody. And so Rock says, well, you are their champion. You are the world champion. You are my champion. But there is one last thing before the final boss rides up into the sunset. I have something to give you. And so everyone's like, what the hell? And the Rock reaches into his pocket. And I thought for sure he was going to come out with this. But instead, he reaches into his pocket. He goes, open your hand. And so Cody opens his hand. And the Rock puts something in his hand. We don't see what it is. And he closes Cody's hand and he says, you don't even have to open your hand to know what this is. Don't you ever break my heart again. And so he leaves and Cody's got that look on his face. Cody broke his heart? 
Cody broke his heart somehow. And uh, oh, Rock has given him something to remember that by. Man. And, what you doing. know, I got to say one thing, Dave, because I've been thinking about this. Yes. Because, you know, people are talking about uh, this kind of place in AEW, like, you know, what, what, what do people want? You know, everything like this. And uh, do you remember what one worst storyline of the year? Worst storyline of the year? I don't know. In the Observer Awards. It um, was MJF and the Devil. Which actually drew. That's the point. Yeah. So, like, as much as people voted that the worst feud and hated it, the reality is it was a sequential week-to-week storyline, and there was a mystery. Who is the devil? Yes. And I have noticed that, like, people love a mystery. And uh, oh, I think so. I think so yeah, for sure. Yeah. That putting that thing in Cody's hand, I don't know what it is. But, you know, Twitter's whatever, but, you know, I was I was kind of searching through Twitter. I was actually searching Twitter because Rock dropped some F-bomb that they bleeped out, and I couldn't read his lips, and I was trying to figure out if anybody figured out what he said. But as I'm scrolling through, it's like, that's all everybody's talking about is, what did The Rock give Cody? What do you think he gave him? And it's like, that's what people love. They love a mystery, and they have to follow the show every week to find out what's going on in this story. And this is going to be a long-term mystery because Rock's leaving. Yep. But I thought it was very, very clever what they did because clearly they're doing Rock and Cody one on one. I mean, that was made patently obvious in this segment here. Well, that is, is certainly the plan right now. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and not for a long time. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next year's WrestleMania. I, I hey, you know what? If, if this guy felt good and he did great in that match and he didn't get hurt, I mean, if he thinks he can do two more years then it should be Rock and Cody next year and Rock and Roman Reigns the year after. And that's two gigantic WrestleManias that you've got Mm -hmm. based on those matches. Yeah, it's going to be big, but man, yeah. Um, Rock and Cody should be, uh, I mean, it's it's natural. You know, I mean, they they booked it. You know, he pinned Cody, so they booked it. Um, it, You know, yeah, yeah. Um, Probably is good to to keep Cody as champion, although that's not 100%. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.